Disabled player given game loss for a staff mistake at Knoxville Regionals. This is what's happening at Pokemon events. This is why in my other video I said it's not worth going to any play Pokemon event because you're just wasting money to get bullied by staff or cheated on by other players because everyone is also being unsporting since the community is so toxic. So I mentioned what happened to the disabled player in my Charlotte Regionals video and Ray from my Patreon Discord found the twit longer so now we can get into what happened and show how horrible these events are. If you enjoy the video, well, enjoyment in this, like if you find the video interesting or you want to share for awareness, please do so. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff so this video gets seen through the YouTube algorithm. Let's see what happened. I'm making this post for my friend Andrew, who does not have an active Twitter account. Andrew is severely disabled, is always accompanied by a nurse, and has to constantly be hooked up to a ventilator, but loves Pokemon and wants to go out to the events. God bless him. Because of this, Andrew has always been given a static seating at events. Andrew recently moved from TCG to VGC because it's much easier for him to play VGC, as opposed to with cards because he has very limited mobility and speech. Andrew was excited to play in his first Pokemon event in nearly four years, but had this event ruined for him by some of the most insane rulings I've ever heard of. Wow. Pokemon tournament officials creating extremely distressing situations for their players through just an abuse of the rules. And this happened before what happened at the Charlotte Regionals, so it's like this is just a common occurrence. Multiple times at every event, we are seeing this happen. During the course of the event, Andrew of course had static seating. A staff member would run and grab Andrew's opponent when the pairings went up. From what I understand, there was no signal on Arcanine that the opponent had to go to a table other than the table that was listed. When round four, so like this, no problems for a couple rounds, but round four of Knoxville Regional goes up, Andrew repeatedly asked staff where his opponent was, to which he got no real response. After about 15 minutes of sitting there, Andrew was informed that his opponent was given the win for the round, as staff members had believed Andrew was a no-show. How is that even possible? Andrew contacted staff to find his opponent, and somehow there was no communication between the staff, and then other members of staff just went, eh, no show, Here, here's the win. What? what? Obviously, Andrew had just been waiting at his assigned table the entire time. Andrew, and like, also, where's, like, the dedic- like, you don't need a hard, dedicated staff member for just one player, but it should be, like, the same staff member finding a player every round. Like, oh, round starts? Andrew's sitting in the same spot, you know where he is, go like, and then you go and find the pairings, and then you go and find the player and bring him to Andrew. If it's the same person, there should be no problem. So like, how does that not happen? Wh what, what is this failing? Andrew's opponent was then paged in an attempt to see if he could be located, but as round four was the round leading into lunch, Andrew's opponent left the venue. Because of the situation, it was ruled that Andrew would get the loss, his opponent would get the win, and nothing could be done about the issue. How is this even possible, you may ask? But then you gotta realize, oh, a situation far, far worse ended up happening just a few weeks later where the head judge refused to de-escalate the situation. A judge that felt offended chose to escalate the situation and it led to a minor being thrown out of the event and left on his own for 40 minutes? And it was so such a traumatizing thing for him because he meant no harm, but for some reason that, that didn't count. His opinion was not taken into consideration whatsoever. It doesn't matter that the player tried to make up for it, the head judge just decided to throw the kid out of the venue and said, oh, that, there's nothing we can do, it kind of sucks. And then it turns out that a lot of people are saying like, oh, this individual has been a problem for player safety and rulings in the past and being kicked out of the event was so traumatizing for the player that he wanted to jump into traffic and end it yeah so so that's where we are um andrew's only compensation for this loss due to nothing other than staff negligence was a single side event ticket in my mind, this is an unacceptable way to treat any member of the community, let alone a disabled player who has no real way to stand up for themselves. 
I'm not one to cause drama. I've never been so heated over a ruling or judge call as I am now. The funny thing is, I probably would have never been so heated over a judge call too if it wasn't for what just happened. I'm not sure what the correct solution to the problem is, but giving a loss to Andrew for no reason is definitely not it. And that's another problem that my experience with Pokemon staff is that it's just incompetence or contempt. They don't care about properly enforcing the rules, properly like handling a situation. It, it just seems like a bother. Like I don't even know why staff is there unless it's direct ruling stuff like, oh, what's this card interaction do? Or, hey, my opponent might be doing this. My experience with Pokemon officials at events is that they're effectively high school burger flippers that have no care for the job whatsoever and don't put any effort into it. But that's not how it goes. And as you can see, since this keeps on happening, and it's been happening for many, many, many years now, and it only keeps on getting worse and worse, that this is also a problem with the tournament organizers. There is no due diligence to get proper officiation for these events. It's also crazy that there isn't any protocol for an event like this, like in the case of a glitch or just some kind of other procedural error that isn't any player's fault. And then like, what about the head judge? Like there should be no more rulings. Instead, it just kind of seems like some jaded person that doesn't care about it, like a jaded judge that doesn't care about this just kind of saw the disabled kid, went, that looks like a lot of hassle, and then just went, hey, you, you lose. That's that's it. Instead of no attempt to resolute this, no attempt to try to figure out what happened, it's, ah, we can't do anything. Edit. Andrew's name did have a table number next to it. Staff should have found his opponent, and when his opponent said they had a no-show, the judge should have checked the slip. Exactly, like, how? How do you even get to the point where the loss is given? before even trying to figure out how to just not give the loss and rectify the situation. That if he contacts staff and goes, hey, where's my opponent? All staff has to do is go, oh, table 89, and then head on over there, see a single person waiting for their opponent, and go, oh, you, you guys over there. How? How? This shows even more negligence from staff at the event and adds fault to the opponent. Yeah making Andrew's game loss even more inexcusable. So going back to what I said about not wanting to participate in Pokemon tournaments because there's so many unsporting scumbags out there, this person didn't even attempt to look for the opponent. He sat down, probably just went, probably just quietly smirked the entire time going, oh man, that's a free win, my guy didn't even show up. And then when he was, going, when he was gone, he might have even hurt, I, I'm not even going to say might, it's probably likely. He heard his name on the intercom and he went, not my problem. I got the win later. Lunchtime. I bet almost everyone that's gone to a single regionals has something to say about one or multiple unsporting opponents in both VGC and TCG, or just very horrible staff and management of the event. It's also, I would say funny, but it's more sad. That's like, wait, I'm just preemptively blocked by day two events when there's drama going on at the events they host because they hosted Knoxville and now they're going to be doing Fort Wayne. So like, it's it's just all bad people. The, the Again, play Pokemon's corrupt. I have tons of videos about that. Uh, Alpha Zealot, Scott Brown, the leader of esports for Pokemon. He's a bad actor, corrupt person as well, playing cover for all the cheaters and all this rule breaking and stuff. Like there's just no proper vetting for event organizers. There's no proper event hosting. Head judges are corrupt. Tournament organizers are corrupt. Officials just do not care and it like everything just sucks so you're paying 70 dollars just to get scammed at, for a pokemon event it just keeps on getting worse and worse and nothing is ever done about it but nothing can be done about it because that would mean verlisify was right and we can't be having that now can we later